Hi everyone, welcome to Harsha Trainings. So today I have come up with video on interfaces. So in this video, we are going to discuss process model creation and process model best practice. Annex 1, what are the process variables and how to create. Annex 1, how to create an action of the models. Let us move on to the session. Now, uh, you can see this is an additive, uh, this is a grid only grid, right? We can also have an editable grid where we can change the items within the tabular format. All right. So let's let's do that and design one editable grid. So what are the things we, we are going to have in that editable grid? So we will have this, uh, uh, we will have this item. The same thing that we are displaying here, we can put into the grid so you can see what they have selected. Okay, so that we can we can check on to the confirmation screen, right? When user can click on submit, then we can have that one. So to reach to that that form label, right? We need a process model. So right now this interface is available within the uh, designer itself. Uh, user cannot take any action on this one. So to so to um, to take an action, we must be creating a process model where we incorporate all this uh, this interfaces to the uh, process model level and then we'll see how it works so today we are going to have uh, to look how to create a process model and what is the process model so before moving there do you know what is a process model anyone have any idea what's a process mm -hmm. model no okay so process model is basically an object which is used to do the workflow items you know like suppose i'll say um I mean, it's it's a basically uh, you might have created the, uh, look, you might have looked through the um, what that's a data flow chart, right? Data flow chart where it has a start button. From start, you will go to this this node, and then from this node, you take a decision to go uh, to X path or Y path. You know, to kind of take your decision now, right? So that is used to fl flow your data accordingly. So that is what we have in your uh, API. So we create a process model we say and I'll say IMS place order so if you remember for giving the naming of our all other objects we are we cannot use white spaces so we have to uh, tightly couple that name so IMS underscore something something like that but in in process model we can put it with the space uh, model to place an order and we have created this process one folder or not if we i don't think so we have created a process one folder so we'll say create a new process model folder i don't think so we have it no so we'll say create a new process model folder and then folder name i'll give ims models so create securities definitely so we have created two groups ims all users and IMS administrators. This will have administrator access. Click on save. Done. So by default, whenever process model gets created, it has start and end event. So now it says whatever you want to design, you can design between this. So we, we got our start and end. Okay. So uh, let's talk about some of the best practice. This is a very common question that everyone asks in your interviews. So what are the best practice we follow while designing a process model? So we'll we'll see a couple of them today. And then uh, while we are keep creating the models, we will be seeing one, one by one, okay? So first of all, we see right now, this is the process model. So um, this is called sim lens. Right, streamlines are basically used to, you know, uh, give you a good look. Like suppose there are multiple parts of your model, right? Suppose, uh, you know, uh, we have order and then approval. If you are going to incorporate all the others, uh, you know, process of that model in same process model, then we can divide into multiple streamlines. But right now we have only one, we have, which is called as order. So we give this an order, okay? And then 
we should always be providing a security to the process model. So if you see uh, while creating the model, we have given the security. And the minimum security is that administrator will have the admin access and all user will have the viewer access. This is the minimum security. We need to have it. So this is the second best practice. Third best practice is that on the properties panel, you can see there's a one panel called properties. After the swim lane, we have properties. In the properties, go to the data management. And as per the uh, um, customer's policy, someone says, archive this process in seven days. Someone says uh, three days. So ideally, that is three days. So you need to say that, you know, we should be setting this archive policy based on the client, uh, I mean, the uh, client requirement. So ideally, we put three days on archival policy. So we'll see what the, I'll tell you what is the difference between archive and delete. Okay, so whenever you mention, you know, uh, there's a third place practice where we we need to we should be setting this archival policy. So they'll say, okay, what's the difference between archive and delete? So archive and delete is that whenever process ends, right? After three days, it will the process will be archived. When it's archived, you can unarchive it from the Appian uh, process memory. But once a process is, if you suppose I have selected this delete and then click on three, right? I set a date and this three. So after a pro process has completed, right? After three days, it will be deleted and it will be deleted permanently. You will not be able to find it and you will not be able to unarchive it. So that's the difference between archive and delete. Okay. So this is the third best practice that we should be setting the archive and delete policy. Okay. Now, what is the fourth best practice? The fourth best practice is that we should always be setting the alerts to a particular group. So right now we don't have any group, right? So let's say and create one group. Let's say IMS. Uh, have you created support groups? I don't think so, right? No, we haven't. So let's create and create group IMS support. IMS support. That is enough. This group. will have support users okay i'll say create give the security um that will be ims administrator okay and ims all users can also see this one okay so as we have created this new support right support group we need to put the support group in all users so we'll say in all users, please create add members and add the group IMS support. Okay. And if you go back to your objects in IMS support, I will add some members like I'm going to add myself. So I have added it. Now, why we need this IMS support and also this kind of sub group, right? We need to create a constant. So we can easily refer this groups, right? So what we will do, we'll create a constant. And what is the naming convention of a constant? All should be in capitals. Support group, okay? Uh, holds the IMS support group. And the type will be group. And here I need to select IMS support. Okay, I'll say create. So I have created this support group constant. Why I've created this? Now, if you go to the process model, in the alerts tab, the fifth best practice or uh, the fourth best practice says, right, we if something has gone wrong with this process model, it will throw an error message, error email. So if you don't set this alert, what it will do, it will start sending that email to every system administrator uh, users available within this environment. So for to stop that, you should be sending it to the particular application wise. So you should be custom error, error settings and select this one. Send alert to recipient defined by the expression. And here we will select that constant because that constant is having my IMS support group, right? So now what will happen this way, this, Whatever, if something is going wrong within this process model, this will only send that message to uh, to the users who is available within this group. 
so right now i am only the person so i will only receive that email if i let someone else only those two people will receive the emails if something has gone wrong okay now the third and the fifth best practice is that you should always be giving some dynamic name to your process display so um as of now uh, the process display name is ims place order uh we'll say we'll put some to make it dynamic we'll say uh now now function is giving your data and time okay so this basically gives your data and time so this that will make your instance dynamic i'll say save and close okay just check the process model everything is fine now so these are the some best practice that you need to follow okay all right now um we have to configure the interface that we created right that interface whenever user will click on action they should be getting that interface so we will there's a smart service called user input task so we drag it and drop it here okay and i'll give that name as ims um inventory order okay so there are certain things that you have to configure so i give the name i am a inventory order now if you double click this one and go to the assignment so whom it should be assigned this should be assigned to the person who has initiated it so for that we will use process initiator right this is now going to assign the person who is going to uh, initiate it so when the i am the person who is going to initiate it i don't need any notification so i'll just uncheck this checkbox so as, as as soon as i give an assignment you will see there was a question mark which has been removed now and it's saying that the user icon so this form is going to assign to the person who is going to start it the process now second thing is that we have to call the forms go to the forms tab on double click the user input task go to the forms tab and then here we have to call that form that we have created so we need to call that our parent form so this is a parent form i will just take it here and i'll type start typing name ims underscore order uh, place order form so as soon as i select this form it says there are inputs do you want to create when they say this one they are talking about this inputs the rule input that we have there are two rights so they are saying there are some inputs that we have found in your interface do you want to create in your process model yes i want to create so we'll say yes when i say yes the same inputs will be creating here all right um as of now i don't want to save draft i'll tell you what is the use of save draft i'll tell you so now as you see this input and if you go to the data tab these two inputs will be created now this information is now going to available within this particular node only right but you want to pass this info information to the entire process model so that to do so we have to create the process variables because the process variables are the variables which is available throughout the process model so this order items i need to create one more variables let's for example i am going to create the button action so you can create it from here as well so i'll say click on the new process variable icon here and i'll say okay and we will pass the new process variable that i have created and pass it here <laughs> all right now there is another way of creating the variables you go to the properties tab click on the variables and click on the add variables and then here what is the other name we have a uh, order order details right ims underscore order items like this let's check it so the second is that order items okay so go to the properties go to the variable tab click on here give the name order items and ims order items and it will be multiple so multiple click on okay it's created now if you go here and go to the data and you see the input and output so input we have this one and you have to configure with this order items now this is the process variables you see that pv pv it means process variables all right now this form is configured we are passing the information and when we proceed we will see that uh, those data that user has selected will come to this label okay now this is done okay 
all right so we have to make sure this node is on the not just on the line in between the line so you see this arrow i can now here right oh okay let's save and publish so whatever make changes you gonna make you need to save and publish this first so i'm gonna save and publish now if i go to the file and then we say start process for debugging so i'm going to start the process for debugging all right now, now you see that this is now active this is this is a model but this is an active instance so i click here i'll say view the form when i click the view the form i will be able to see the forms that i have we have built right so this is giving me the information like these are the data that you have it please select an order so i'll say pen i'll say quantity 10 add and then i'll say copy quantity 10 12 i'll say add okay and i click on submit when i click on submit this process form will get completed here and we will be able to see the information that user has selected. So we have selected item one, and item three, and these are the quantity. Okay. So, but now, and the end user is not going to do all these things from here, right? They need some front end now from the tempo. They need to do it. So we will go there before that. Any doubt? Any questions? How we configure this user input task to the process model? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. So, like, uh, what, what was the purpose? Like, why we are creating this process model? What was the use for the uh, application? So, and this is the, I mean, process model is an object which is, which you uh, will be doing the workflows, right? Mm -hmm. Now, whatever you have selected, we need to provide that information to the data, store that information to the database, right? So, we, mm -hmm. we will doing all those things here. So, by using process model, we can do that. This is the object which is give you the workflow, how to do, what to do. You know, those interfaces are the simple objects which you have created. That interface you cannot publish directly as an action to the user. To give them action to the user, you have to create a process model. Mm -hmm. So we have not any uh, editable options. We are not any inserting data. Just right now we are not doing. Right now we haven't inserted any data. We need to do that. So we will do it do this once we configure that accent everything right now i'm just configuring the user input task the same way we have there are a lot of smart service you can see all these are the smart services so we have to use uh, one of them from here to write the data to the database okay mm -hmm. so using process model we can also create data number of rows and whatever we can do delete operations yeah i mean basically the suppose okay now thing is that once we submit this information mm -hmm. it will go for the manager approval Right, say inventory manager approval. Do you, I mean, would you like to approve it or not? Because you, as an employee, you are placing an order, right? As an employee, you are placing an order. Suppose you have ordered 10 pens. Your manager says, no, why you need 10 pens? They reject your order, right? Then mm -hmm. that order will got as a rejected and you will not receive your item, right? So mm -hmm. all those decisions, right? You know, uh, like we need to do it from the process model. We'll see how it works, how it workflow like divide the workflows and other flows right we'll see that work. but process model is the important objects which actually do the work this all interface and other things are the supporting rules which is used to <coughs> give you an interface give some logic some, some business rules but the process model is the object which is used to give you the workflow from where to do, do what from this data to do what what decision to be make right everything all right yeah so no more questions yeah. i have found out okay uh, one second so yes what is that user input uh, like what is that user input is nothing but the application we are attaching to this process no the user input is an <coughs> user input task is a smart service which is mm -hmm. used to uh, incorporate your interface that you have designed okay. so you see that right when i run this instance this was active when I click on a view form, it was showing the form that we have designed. Right? Okay. It will be clear when, when I will create, the, create an action using this process model, it will be clear. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Neera. 
uh, uh, where will data is stored? Um, right now, are... right now, right now, data are stored in the process variables. You see that, right? That instance. Uh, let me go to that instance. If you go to the monitor tab, you will be able to see one active instance. So right now the data into if you go to the properties you see in the process variables this is the process variable that we created right so here is the data okay so this and data I, will be available throughout the process model okay and uh, what is a stored procedure uh, stored procedure yeah why that question is here stored procedure Yesterday I saw a process model uh, um, uh, variables and inputs, outputs, and uh, uh, activity. Uh, then I saw there. Stored procedure is a database concept, right? You create a stored procedures. So if you have a stored procedures, then you can pull your data from the stored procedures. There is a smart function called uh, execute stored procedures to get the data. Okay. When we will use that uh, uh, stored process? It's not mandatory to use the stored procedures. Suppose you, there's a huge data, and if you call the data directly from the view, maybe it will be slow. Stored why people use stored procedures? Because the stored procedures are faster. That can handle multiple operations. You know, like if you want to do three to four calculations and then get the data. You will not be able to do it from the view, so you will create a stored procedures and then you will use that stored procedure to pull the data. <coughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. So that's why we use stored procedure. That that's that use in very uh, complex logic, not into the simpler one. Okay. 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 So now we have created this process model. All right. Now we have created this process model, and then let's go and uh, create an action. So go to the your um application and then uh, click on this setting icons and click on the application action so it says uh, display the action i mean click on new action so i'll say give the name as ims place uh, ims order okay and give the name a description like to place an order and it's saying which process model you want to use for your action so i have created one ims place order so i have a place order all right click on save action all right now you see this we go back to our application all application window now you see this right there are certain reds there are certain gray i publish second right so what is this so red one is the published the gray one is not published okay so to display an action to the end user into the tempo page, we should be publishing the application. So we select this application and we'll say publish. So once I publish our application, it will be now become red. And now if I go to the tempo page that end user uses, go to the tempo. Now go to the action. You see this inventory management system. It's now coming here. And the name that we have given IMS order. All right. Now, if I click right, you see this. There are only eight tasks, right? Now, what I'm going to do, I'm click, going to click on IMS order. It says action completed. Now, task is become nine. I go to the task, and I can see this form here. I can click on this form, and then I will get everything that we have designed. Okay. Any doubt? How to create an action? No doubt. Okay. Now, but it's not correct, right? If I'm going to action and click on this my action, I if I click this one, I should be getting the form immediately, right? It, it's not looking good to I click the action and then I go to the task and then from there I see that. So to do so, what we have to do is we need to make some changes in the process model, and that is called activity chaining. So from the start to the user input task in between if there are any number of nodes we have to do the activity chaining throughout the process from here to there like suppose in between there are some of the script tasks we still we have to do some activity chaining so what is the use of activity chaining when you want to 
when you want to see your form immediately we have to put that model within the activity chaining okay and suppose from one screen to another screen if you want to put the uh, want to see the screen immediately we need to put the activity chaining so now i have given this activity chaining and i click and click on uh, save and publish i publish this thing whatever changes i have made i publish now i go to the action all right and then i click on ims order you see i don't have to go to the task immediately the form appears on my screen and then i can select whatever i want click on add copy add right and click on submit so now user can take two decisions submit or cancel now if you go to the process instance that we have now i mean all these instances that we have let me go to this within this our uh, application and then click on monitoring and then we go to the active instances you see this right so all those information that user has selected is here and then button action is true right but what if user click on cancel if user click on cancel the button action will be false right if you remember we have said that value into the interface level on the buttons value save into right so now let's go to the process model and then we take a go to the gateways and then from here you take the xor gateway and say the name is action what is an action now if user is clicking on cancel if user is clicking on submit there are two different paths we have to select so suppose um, uh, for example for now i'm just getting this script task for dummy script task for now this is a dummy script task and then if i'll take one more line from here and i'll connect to the this thing okay and within this double click on this xor gateway go to the decision and say new condition so what is the new condition the button action the pv uh, pv button action so if my pv button action is true then go to the dummy node if it is false directly and the process okay now fifth best practice if you do not have any sub process available within your system you should always be terminating your process even just to know that the process is internally completed all right so we had made some changes let's go and publish this model So you see this right as number of times we are running our uh, process it is creating one instance it's all are completed so the archival policy is three days so after three days what will happen this process will be archived from here okay now let's go and create one more instance so i'll say inventory management system ims order and then click on the form i this time i'll say cancel i don't want to do anything i by mistake i created so let's click on cancel I click on cancel now if you go to the instances one more instance has been created and see the workflow as i have taken action as cancel it is taken this path all right now let's go and create one more in, uh, instance and then i'll say let's click on copy quantity 12 click on add and then this this click on add i click on submit so when i click on submit you see there will be one more instance created and this instance will take this path got it how to how to uh, decide which workflow has to taken what what is the use of this button action why we have given true and false and then how we are deciding which uh, path has it has to take any doubts dummy there is any uh, expressions no right now we have put this simply dummy node just to divide this workflow so right now just to show you that okay if we take this uh, submit button then it will take this path if you take the cancel button it will take this path so we'll use some dummy node i mean right now there is no use it's just for dummy as the name okay. suggested 
okay any doubt guys so we have seen how to create a process model we have seen what are the best practices we have seen how to create an action how to publish this what is the what is the meaning of publishing an application how to incorporate interface to your process model how to take decision which path has to take these all things we have seen do you want to see more or you want to stop me here and then continue tomorrow otherwise it will be too much for you guys tell me sir so, continue to okay you want me to continue continue tomorrow sir not today okay. tomorrow no, no. fine tomorrow all right okay so any doubt i am mean, guys please if you have any doubt please ask you know otherwise it will at, at the end of the session there will be a lot of questions you know which is not good so better you clarify your doubts by the topics we are discussing right so come tomorrow do your practice i will suggest please do not make any excuses start building your application you have everything ready with for you then come with some questions do not depend only the videos right uh, you are not going to do the uh, seeing the videos uh, while you are doing building an actual applications and all right so please don't do that please start practicing okay and then we'll meet tomorrow any any more questions uh yes to be uh, yep. uh just now i asked like user inputs like what was that like what is that function doing what is it all about like user input you have designed one interface right okay. why you have designed that interface to show to whom yeah okay custom to user. show to, to show the uh, to show to the end users right so that yeah. user input task smart service is used to show that interface that you have designed to the end users using the process model mm -hmm. okay 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 yeah thank you any more questions all right let's uh, meet tomorrow then and we'll see if uh, there are any questions and otherwise we'll proceed further okay we we'll see how to write the data to the database uh, how to you know we have to set some order id and uh, everything's right so we need to do that okay guys let's meet tomorrow then